Good morning. As folks continue to make their way in, I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ to Central United Methodist Church. It's our mission here to follow Jesus. We do that by loving God and loving our, our neighbors. This is participatory this morning, so we're going to all say that together. We follow Jesus by loving God and loving our our neighbors. I am Reverend Ann Kovan. I am one of your associate pastors here at Central, and it is a joy to welcome you. You could have been anywhere doing anything this morning, and you chose to be here this morning, and that makes me glad. But most important, you are delighting the creator of the universe with your presence here this morning, and we get to enjoy the presence of the creator of the universe, and we get to worship a risen Lord here today, and may the Holy Spirit come and join us and connect us to God and to one another. If you're new to Central or if this is your first time with us, we're especially glad that you are here if you haven't already, when you leave this worship service, please visit our Welcome Center um, on your way out in the Commons area, out that way. During our ritual of friendship, as we pass that blue pew pad to sign in, there's a card in the back of that pew pad, and it's called a Connect card. We want you to fill that out and take that to the Welcome Center, and we have a gift for you, and it's it's a small gift, but it's just to let you know that you are loved, that God anticipated your visit here with us today, and that you, that you belong, and that you are thought of. On your way in this morning, I hope that you picked up an order of worship, and also our new Under the Domes are ready and uh, set around the entrances to the sanctuary, so if you haven't already looked this up on our website where it's available or gotten it via email and you want a hard copy, please pick one of these up. It is a wonderful way to keep up with everything that's going on in the church and a multitude of ways for you to connect to God through Central, through fellowship opportunities, study opportunities, outreach and service opportunities. And of, uh, always our website, centralmethodist.net, is also a great place to go and look at upcoming events and register for studies. And speaking of studies, uh, I just want to highlight that on the cover of your order of worship, at the bottom of the front page is a description of some of the studies that are about to start. And there's a web address there for you to go to to register for those studies. I hope that you'll take advantage um, of these studies that are going to be beginning soon. Our prayer concern for today is for our college students who are traveling and making their transition this week and in the coming week. And I have to personally add, please also pray for the parents and the families who are being left behind as they, as they make their way in the world. Now, let's all take a deep breath and make that transition from the busyness of getting here to being here as we prepare ourselves for worship.
The God of wisdom sent Jesus Christ, the bread of life, to teach us his ways, feed us with his flesh and blood, and fill us with the Holy Spirit. Now, while we are standing, let us say what we believe. We'll use the Apostles' Creed found in Selection 881 in your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From whence he shall come to judge the quick and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting.
I invite you to play, pray with me the colic found in your order of worship in the Lord's Prayer. God, our living Father, we give you thanks for sending our Lord Jesus Christ to give his life as bread for the world. Fill us now with your spirit that we may make the most of the time understanding your will and expressing your wisdom in the midst of the people you have chosen. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we now pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Welcome this morning to worship here at Central. It's a joy to be with you. And if you will take a moment and sign that pew pad at the end of your pew, Smile at your neighbor at least, say hey to them, and remember you can invite them to any of our worship services or ministries. A personal invitation from you is the most effective to get people involved, so be that person. Also, I want to invite each and every one of you that if you have questions or want to speak to one of the clergy, Ann and Thomas and I, we would love to sit down and talk with you. We'd love to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about anything including joining the church. This is your invitation to Christian discipleship right here. We want you to be part, an active part in this church, this community of Christians. And now I'm going to invite our Old Testament reader to come up and read the scripture. Today's Old Testament lesson comes from the book of Proverbs. We're in chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out at seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Come, eat my food, and drink the wine that I have mixed. Leave your simple ways, and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord.
gospel lesson this morning comes from the book of John. Please rise. All who are able, please stand. The gospel lesson comes from the book of John, chapter 6, verses 51 through 58. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which the ancestors ate and they died, but the one who eats this bread will live forever. The word of the Lord. Our act of praise today is found in selection 832 in your hymnal. We're going to use the second response. I invite you to join me. are the works of the Lord, studied by all who have pleasure in them. Who has caused his wonderful works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. His people the power of his works by giving them the heritage of the nations. The Lord sent redemption to his people and has commanded his covenant forever. Holy and wondrous is God's name. children who I invite up to be with Reverend Ian this morning. Okay, today I want to talk to you about a Bible verse. It's from the New Testament in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17, and it says this. It says, may Christ dwell in your heart. That means that Jesus lives in your heart. I want you to put your hand on your heart, 
So you can feel the place where Jesus lives in you. Can you feel? Do you know what dwell means? Dwell means a place where we live. So you dwell, you dwell in your home. And in your home, on the outside of your home, you might put things on the outside that let people know that you live there. Do you have a wreath on your door or a flag outside your house? Do you have any flowers or plants on your porch? Do you have a number on your mailbox? Yeah, all those things that let people know who lives inside that house. Well, when Jesus lives in us, we, we put signs on the outside to let the world know that Jesus lives in us. Now, in a little bit, we're going to hear another passage of Scripture, and it teaches us. I want you to keep your, keep your hand on your heart, because that's where Jesus is. It tells us that when Jesus dwells in us, one of the things that we do is we sing, because because the heart is the dwelling place of Christ, and out of our heart must come singing. So do you all like to sing? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a song, and when we sing, I want you to keep your hand on your heart, and what we're going to sing is Jesus Loves Me. Do you all all know the song Jesus Loves Me? Okay, Dr. Don is going to play so that you all don't have to hear me sing because we want to hear you sing. So let's sing that now, okay? I want all of you to sing with the how you let the world know that Jesus dwells in your heart. Let's say a prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the opportunity to have your spirit and your son Jesus live in our hearts. And thank you for the opportunity for music and singing and praise and thanksgiving through our mouths that will let the world know that you dwell in our hearts. And may we show that in all we do, in all our words and deeds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Please be seated. Listen carefully to these words from Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm reading verse 1, and then I'm reading from verses 15 through 20. Hear now the word of the Lord. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us. Be careful, then, how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time, because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. So the final day of our mission trip to Costa Rica, historically, is a free day. This past year, we spent our free day ziplining in the jungles of Costa Rica. And before you zipline, you must get to a very, very high place, because then the ziplining is just a series of of ziplines as you descend down the very high point that you've reached somehow. Well, the somehow on this particular day was to hike up a very high mountain through the rainforest. We were a pretty big group, and our, my, half of the group, we got separated from the group ahead of us because we stopped to look at poisonous dart frog that was on the side of the trail. It's beautiful neon green and black just right there on the edge of the trail well the god another god had the the first group and they were on up the trail quite a distance because of because we had stopped and we got an urgent warning on the radio and what we found out was that there was a fur de lance or a fur de lance Does anybody know what that is any snake experts in here A fur de lance is a very highly aggressive, deadly, venomous viper snake that was across the trail ahead. And the first group, the guide and the lead, almost stepped on this viper. Fortunately, he did not, and they backed up and backed down the trail and radioed us to let us know that we needed to take a different way. The writer here of this passage is giving an equally dire and urgent warning. The writer is saying, watch out, walk carefully, choose your path with care and discernment. You see, That day, there actually was a second path that we could take that was a little bit longer, but it would detour us around the section of trail where the viper was. That was a much better path for us to take than the path with the snake across it. The scripture here contrasts two distinct paths. One is foolishness. The dangerous path with the viper, which leads to to harm, destroyed purpose, disillusionment, and brokenness. The other path is wisdom, which is the safer, more intelligent way forward that, according to the scripture, leads to joy 
and community and generosity and praise and thanksgiving and expressions like things like music and singing. The path with the deadly viper is characterized by evil. What exactly does evil do? Well, in this passage, we are taught that evil robs us of time, controls us into harm, and leads us away from the will and the understanding of the will of God. So speaking of an evil that robs us of time, controls how we think, dumbs us down, and leads us to all kinds of ungodly things like anger, divisiveness, and even violence. I could not help myself, friends. The passage led to one thing. Big and small screens. Big screens and little screens that we hold in our hands that can be used for so much good. But the truth is that media images and sounds like the evil that Paul warns us about in the passage shapes our consciousness. Media images manipulate our view of ourselves and it orders our priorities without us even thinking about what's happening to us. A religious and communications expert, Michael Warren, who is just one of many who has done research on this, he warns us that we must watch, we must consume media with a critical eye and with intention just as the scripture warns us to. Media developers will craft iconic representations, meaning pictures, images, memes that we see with our eyes rather than with our mind's eye or using the imagination that God created in us for wisdom and discernment of God's truth. When we consume these images without thinking, they shape our perceiving, our thinking, and even our behaviors reactively. Thousands of people are employed. They are paid to deliver you messages and images that make you angry. Because it is proven that you are more likely to engage in media that makes you angry. You are more, you are more likely to engage in a media platform that is designed as extreme in, extremism. Right? That annoys you, that agitates you. There are algorithms that prioritize the messages, the images that are delivered into your media that are designed to make you angry. New York Times researcher Max Fisher, he argues this is the most destructive force in our society today. This is the path of foolishness and lack of understanding that the scripture warns us about. The text interestingly addresses the matter of time. It warns us to have the right attitude about time, not to waste it, but time is precious, to capitalize on the time that we have because it is so short, not to waste it, but to use it as an opportunity for the purpose of, of, 
of understanding God's will, of connecting with God, so that we might understand what God's purpose is in our minute-by-minute living to do what is good and righteous and holy and true to make the most of our time to live with goodness in the midst of evil. For these days are evil. Every opportunity of time should be exploited for good, not to drift through aimlessly, losing time lost in media that makes us angry or isolated. Not to be ignorant, but to understand. We underline and emphasize understanding the Lord's will and taking the path of foolishness and wasted time or taking the path of righteousness and intentionally understanding God's will is a choice that we make. We get to choose. Do we take the deadly one, the one with the viper, the one that delivers us into wrath? Or do we choose the one that delivers us to a destination of wisdom, one that is attainable, that wisdom is attainable in the here and now, that we get to discover that which is good and holy to God. To understand means to use our mind to think critically and rationally and to make wise choices and actions. The passage says, don't get drunk on wine but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Drunkenness was associated with loss of control, and it was common at the Roman-style banquets that, that the, the, the Christians, the, the, the rich, the wealthy, and the poor would have attended. And the writer of this letter to them is addressing this drunkenness that at these banquets and these taverns where things would routinely go way out of control. And drunkenness is here, it is contrasted in the same way wisdom is with foolishness, it is contrasted with being filled with the Spirit. Drunkenness is linked to foolishness and wastefulness of time as opposed to the wisdom of the Spirit and using time for good. That researcher Max Fisher, I love this. Well, I don't love it. Actually, I don't love it at all. <laughs> I don't love it at all, but he compares social media to a drug. That 80% of Americans are taking this drug dozens of times a day that we are living in a world where the majority of people are existing on a mood-altering substance multiple times a day, that we are drunk on social media and news media, and it has become a kind of higher power, that we are created to be controlled and poured into by a higher power, which is God. And we are going to be controlled by an external power. And we get to choose which that is. What do you want to be controlled by? A force that makes us paranoid, that leads us to poor decisions, broken relationships, injury, embarrassment, shame are one that leads us to praise, thanksgiving, and generosity. In that jungle that day as we were climbing that path away, 
Let me reiterate, we took the path away from the deadly viper. And as we were climbing steeply up and up, it began to pour rain. I was reminded of the scene in Forrest Gump where he's describing all the different kinds of rain in the jungles of Vietnam. And he, he talks about the big, fat, wet raindrops. And he talks about the rain that seems to come up from below as, he's, as they're walking through the water. That we were drenched. We could have swam through a river and not been any wetter. It was gushing from our helmets. It was filling our gloves. So I was holding my hands up so my gloves wouldn't fill with puddles of water. It was drenching my clothes. But it was funny because we were filled with joy. We just kind of looked at each other and we just accepted that we were going to be soaking wet on this day. And it was okay because we were in it together. We were all soaking wet and we were happy to be where we were, doing exactly what we were doing. That is how it is with the Spirit, that we can be drenched and filled and overflowing with the Spirit, so filled that we are drenched with joy and with wisdom and with understanding and it and it starts in our hearts the seat of the lord and it works its way out in song that as we sing it is a reflection of what is in our heart and the path of wisdom is characterized by worship that being here together in worship in this community of believers is along the path of wisdom. That we get so full of the Spirit that we can't help but sing. If we sing poorly or if we sing well, it doesn't matter. We make sounds of joy. Being filled with drunkenness, it leads to disorderly and harmful behavior. But look what being filled with the Spirit leads to. Praise, thanksgiving, and generosity. It is the expression of the fullness of the Holy Spirit in us. It is the very connecting point that fills us with the Spirit. But it is also the expression of being possessed and controlled by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 3.17, it says that Christ makes his home in our heart. And what comes out of our mouths is a reflection of what is in our heart. That includes singing and worship. That is along the path of wisdom and not foolishness. Michael warns that Michael Warren warns that it is human nature to mimic. That we mimic something. Even the scripture writer points out when it says we are to mimic God, to be imitators of God as beloved children. That as children we mimic our parents. So we're going to mimic something. We act like what we see. We act like what we see in the images that are fed to us. So this is bad news for those of us who are overexposed to media. For we're going to imitate things that make us angry or that divide us, that cause harm. But verse 1 here in Ephesians chapter 5, it says we are to be imitators of God. This is the one and only place in the Bible where it tells us to be imitators of God. We have to back up a few verses to Ephesians chapter 4 verse 24 where the writer talks about clothing ourselves 
in the new self, that we have been created according to the likeness of God in true righteousness, in holiness. In verse 1 of chapter 5, it starts with therefore. It points to the immediate verse where it says, forgiving one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. We are able to imitate God like children imitate their human parent. We should want to become like God and share this family resemblance. Imitating God requires a new relationship that has been made available to us through the forgiveness offered to us through Christ. Which path do you want for yourself? Would you go the path that is blocked by the viper? One where we waste time and overindulge in practices that destroy our peace and separate us from God or one another? Or the one where we get to understand God's will in our minute-by-minute living, whether we are washing dishes or doing laundry or helping others or stopping to pick up lunch on a busy work day, tending to the sick, making decisions and taking actions that are pleasing to God and beneficial to others. Let's not step on deadly vipers, my friends, foolishly by being complacent and lazy with time, ignoring the signs and warnings. Let us be people whose heart are the seat of God's presence and out of which comes singing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if you will bow your heads, I'll offer the prayers. Almighty God, we have come together to know you better, to acknowledge your love towards us, and to give thanks for our many blessings. And as we build our relationship with you, help us to build relationships with one another. As you call us to seek and spend time with you, O oh Father, guide us to make intentional decisions to seek holy spiritual practices, to actively participate in worship and prayer, in acts of care for one another, in the use of our spiritual and financial gifts. As you make us imitators of Christ, Lord, help us be witnesses by our words and actions to the gospel. Lord, when we witness others suffering, help us to feel their pain so that we might be moved with love for one another to action. Soften our hearts so that we might be forgiving toward one another. Strengthen our wills to make a difference in others' lives. And God of all, today especially, help us be grateful for the relative peace in which we live. But do not let that blessing dim our compassion for those who live in the middle of violence. We pray that you change hearts. Pull those inclined to evil instead toward you so that the peace in this world may reign. And Lord, we ask that you strengthen those who suffer and guide them to a better life. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we take these moments to intentionally offer ourselves our gifts to God's service. I'll invite our ushers to come forward for the offering.
Father God, we praise you and thank you for our many blessings and ask that you take ourselves, our gifts, and bring them into your service. In the name of Jesus, we offer these prayers. Amen. Beloved children of God, listen to this miracle. God has made his wisdom available to you. So go forth as people who receive that wisdom and sow seeds of hope and love and togetherness. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>